Well, Toby Young is the General Secretary of the Free Speech Union and somebody who we've worked with on this programme before because we want to get out into the public some of the ridiculous things, some of the bad things that are happening in our country. This one, Toby, is totally astonishing. I mean, this, it would appear... And we know the stamp out racism campaigns and all the things that have happened in football, which we would not disapprove of. But it would appear there's now almost like a Stasi-like team hunting down football supporters whose views don't match PC views. Yeah, it is extraordinary. I don't think I've ever come across a case quite like this before, Nigel. It's probably the most egregious example of a private company interfering in free speech that the Free Speech Union has encountered so far. I was alerted to Lindsay's case by Harry Miller, the ex-copper who's become a free speech warrior. Yes. When he heard about her case, he thought this is one for the Free Speech Union. So Lindsay has been banned by Newcastle United, banned from attending games until 2026, not because she said anything racist, but because she said trans women aren't women. And she didn't say that to an employee of the club, to a player, to an official. She didn't even say it to another Newcastle United fan. She just said it on Twitter. And not only uh, when someone complained about this did Newcastle United decide to open an investigation. They also asked the Premier League for help in investigating her. They said, you've got a shadowy surveillance unit embedded in the Premier League. Yep. Investigate this dangerous person. Mm. And they, they compiled a 14-page dossier on Lindsay containing information like where she walks her dog, uh, what the church is called. So this is it's, surveillance? It's surveillance. It's, it's the stadium Stasi. And when, uh, and when they passed this 14-page dossier, this dodgy dossier... Which you can see on your screens Newcastle, right now. Um, uh, Newcastle then passed it on to Cum uh, Northumbria Police. Northumbria police then turned up at Lindsay's house and said, you better accompany us to the station where we can interview you under caution. If you don't, we'll arrest you and force you to come with us. They concluded after two hours, perhaps reluctantly, that she hadn't actually broken the law. Mm. It's not yet illegal to say mm. that trans women aren't women. Maybe if Labour get elected, it will be, but it's not at the moment. <laughs> and uh, you would have thought that at that point, NUFC would have concluded no case to answer, you know, no nothing to investigate. But instead, they decided that she breached Newcastle United's diversity and inclusion policy and banned her for two and a half seasons. It's absolutely well, outrageous, Nigel. Lindsay Smith joins us here in the studio, a banned Newcastle United fan. Uh, I, I, you've done nothing wrong. You haven't broken the law. You've given an opinion. Tell me the funny thing about this. Just remind our viewers and listeners, Newcastle is 80% owned by Saudi Arabian money. Uh, where, of course, actually, when it comes to gay rights and everything else, I mean, everything's banned. Lindsay, you clearly love the football club. Yeah, I do. I mean, I've supported them my whole life, to be honest with you, Nigel. I remember it was my granddad that got me to love them. My dad was in the Air Force, so we moved around a lot when I was younger. Um, and my granddad said, you, you support where you're from. Um, and that was Newcastle United. So um, no matter where I lived in the country, it didn't matter. It didn't matter if I was down south. It didn't matter if yeah. I was living in Grimsby. They were my team. So how do you feel when the police knock at your door and say you've done something <laughs> awful and basically being accused of a hate crime? And that's really what happened to you, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the worst thing about it was, Nigel, is they were actually warned by Harry Miller, fair cop. Yeah. He sent them over um, a big list of information around his his ruling um, which should have made them stop in the tracks and realize it wasn't malicious communications they had no reason to be bothering me um, and instead of reading it they decided to just sack it off and come to my house so and that was I was I was about to sit down to my tea when they came to the door you must have been horrified it was terrifying yeah terrifying I'm, it, I was shaking I was sick to my stomach I mean I've never so much as had a warning off the police if I'm honest so to have two men turn up at my door threatening to arrest me was mortifying. So the ban's in place. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, obviously we're well through the season now, but the ban's in place. Do you have any right of appeal? Um, I have appealed um, and I've upheld it. So, the, the, you know, we gave a very detailed appeal on the areas where they've breached their own policy with respect to um, the timing. So it says in their own complaint policy that they would let the person who's been complained about know within a reasonable amount of time it took them nearly four months to tell me, and I only knew because I got an email telling me I was under police investigation for a hate crime. Do you know, Lindsay, you're very brave for going public on this and sitting in this studio. It's not something that people necessarily relish doing. <laughs> um, I wonder, I wonder, Toby, how many other Lindsays there might be.
Well, I think uh, she's not an isolated case. No. I fear that this unit, this surveillance unit that was mm, set up I by the Premier League might have been investigating hundreds, possibly thousands of yeah, people's yeah. social media accounts, monitoring them for wrong things. Not racism, as you say. I don't, I don't think many of us would well, have a problem with that, but, but, but for merely for disagreeing with pro progressive <coughs> radical orthodoxy on subjects like trans rights. And we put a, uh, a form on our website. Remember how much success you had with your subject access request well, what and was what it? that yeah. revealed yeah. with Coots. Well, well, what we put was interesting to me was I, I came out publicly and said I'd been debanked, at which point thousands of other people came yeah. out well, and said they, because they didn't want to say it on their own. That's why what Lindsay's doing, yeah. and well done you, is actually very important. Because yeah. I think we're going to learn more, aren't we? Uh, we put a form on our website, freespeechunion.org forward slash SAR, S-A-R forward yep. slash. Yep. You can fill and out a it. subject access request yeah. to, 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 to ask it your Premier League club and this stadium stars unit in the Premier League if they've opened a file on you. Because yep. we think this is... Uh, a deep, yeah. deep problem. It's well, not a, not an isolated case. As you say, the SAR and the debanking was my saviour. Let's hope this works. I'm going to give the final word to you, Lindsay, and keep it clean. <laughs> but have you got a message for the Premier League and for Newcastle United Football Club? I think the biggest message I've got really is for them to just not do this to anybody else. They really need to look at what they're doing and understand that just because someone's saying something you don't agree with or it's going against the tide, it doesn't mean you're being hateful. Everybody has their own life experiences. Everyone's views are based on the life that they've lived. Um, and to call me a bigot and call me everything I've been called and compare me to a racist just because I believe in the biology and the, the right to single sex spaces for women, I find mind blowing. If I'm honest. I tell you what, you've got a future in public affairs if you want to. No, I know, no, no. Toby great. might employ you. Well done, you. Thank you for being brave and coming in and telling that story. Thank you. A truly horrifying story.